what are the challenges? What are the setbacks? So if there's somebody out there, whether for their own uh, persona or for their brand that they want to build a community for or a following, what are the, you know, what are the challenges? Uh, I wouldn't call it challenges, but I think you need to be clear on people and purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. So who are the That's people good. you are going after? Mm -hmm. uh, what is your target customer persona mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. community member persona? Mm -hmm. And what's the purpose? Mm -hmm. And if there are tons of communities out there, but what drives those people to come together and talk to each other every mm -hmm. day? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're clear on people in purpose, uh, your impact on the planet is very clear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's that's for me is what will drive. That's a the good answer community. to everything. If you know exactly what you're there for, yeah. then you can answer all the questions, right? Yeah. This is Challenger Brands, helping you build better brands and businesses. Hosted by Illustrato, the brand development and creative agency for ambitious and audacious Challenger brands. Welcome to another episode of Challenger Brands, where we help entrepreneurs and brand custodians build better brands and businesses. I'm your host, Lelaine Chubinitas. I'm the Managing Director at Illustrado Brand Development and Creative Agency. And today we have an exciting, you know, I would call it a panel, but uh, it's an exciting group that we have today. It's an exciting pair that we have today that we will learn from. But before that, I would just like to thank Rove, our constant supporters and partners Thank you so much, Ro, for your support. In today's market landscape, building a community is so important per, for brands, but that's not the easiest thing to do, right? Building a community not only requires a lot of effort, it also requires a lot of charisma and a lot of day-to-day -day nurturing to engage the people. So today, I'm hoping that we will learn more on how to build communities that actually function and that actually grow with you with two of the biggest hitters in the Indian and the Filipino community. So I'm super excited, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> and I, I, I feel so excited also because this is the first time I have two other ladies in the podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having us, Lelaine. Yes. Introductions. On this side is the Josie Conlu. Josie is perhaps one of the most influential Filipino personalities in the United Arab Emirates. I have to emphasize that. Josie has a hand at doing so many things in the community. Uh, you know, uh, you probably know her if you're a Filipino and you don't know Josie, you're living under a rock, okay? <laughs> so Josie is, Josie is very well known. She's done a lot of community, um, you know, support projects. In 2019, she was the only and the first appointed chairman for the Filipino community by the, um, you know, Philippine Consul General. And uh, she is also a youth mentor. Josie is a social entrepreneur. Uh, she has helped grow and establish Emirates Loves Philippines, which has 700,000 fans right now. And I think other assets of Emirates Loves, right? The media company, she has helped build all that. She also has her own um, platform that's called Love Josie. If you haven't seen it yet, please do check it out on Facebook and Instagram. She's got about 300,000 fans. On top of that, Josie, together with Infinite Community, hosts the biggest community, a Filipino community gathering every year. It used to be called Bayanihan, now it's called Shukran Festival, Festival right? In, and in as of my last remembered counting, there was one time you had 50,000 Filipinos mm. under one roof celebrating Philippine Independence Day. So thank you, Josie, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Lelaine. It's a pleasure to be here. So honored. This is overdue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And yes. I'm so happy to introduce to you your counterpart in the Indian community, the Miss Rima Mahajan. Rima, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Rima, you are the founder of the Indian Women of Dubai, which has 100,000 members. Now, Indian Women of Dubai is the biggest community group in the UAE, right? Yes. That's devoted to women. Yes. That's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, and, and you know, if I remember correctly, you come from international management consulting from Bain and Company, and yes. that you left your career in, in international management to pursue your passion of empowering women. That's a big jump, right? And I think um, IWD, as Rima has said, stands for three pillars. First of all, empowering women, celebrating women, and giving back, yes. right? Now, I know we have a lot of stories to talk about, so let's dive into it, okay? First of all, can you share 
with our audience how you got into you know building communities now i know that your experiences are totally different because rima has a specific community that she mm -hmm. has established on the other hand josie your community is more of a General. virtual you know it, it's like people that come yeah. when you call them <laughs> right so this is not and a formal <laughs> organization but yes. when you call when you organize events because of your community connections people come so can you start us off with how this all started? Go for it. Yeah. So when I first arrived in Dubai, you know, the sting of, like many others, the sting of homesickness mm -hmm. hit me hard and the struggle of adjusting to the new culture. It was tough. As I meet people, grow my network, I realized that we all face the same challenges. Mm -hmm. We all have the same sentiments. I wasn't alone, you know? Yeah. And this shared experience, mm -hmm. you know, brought us closer together. Mm -hmm. What inspired me to take the first step was the desire to, um, uh, to create something home away from home. Mm -hmm. I made myself part of the biggest celebrations that we have, mm -hmm. you know? The, the Independence Day every June, the Bayanihan, and many others. And uh, I wanted, I was ambitious. I wanted to, to, to create a space for the Filipinos um, not to feel unsupported. Yes. No, not to let them feel alone because I felt that before, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, by coming together, we created a community that thrives on mutual respect, mm -hmm. support, and a shared cultural pride. Today, the Filipino community in the UAE is very active, mm -hmm. very, very active. We continue to support each other. We continue to uh, contribute to the larger UAE society. Mm -hmm. We continue to uh, um, uh, share our culture, to celebrate our culture. And uh, we created something beautiful and lasting mm -hmm. because the events are getting bigger and better every yes, year. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Unbelievable. And this... It all started with this first step of coming together. Mm -hmm. And of course, we cannot deny the support that was given to us by the host country, the exactly. UAE, which we all call our second home. Definitely. So that is how I started, just because I'm ambitious. <laughs> I wanted Homesick to and ambitious. Homesick and ambitious, <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. Rima, did you have the same uh, I experience? I think very similar stories. Mm -hmm. So I moved here from London uh, just before COVID. Mm -hmm. And I call IWD was born during COVID mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. we could feel the stress in the system. Women in our community were facing financial stress, mm -hmm, physical mm -hmm. stress, emotional stress, and they needed a platform to come together. Yeah. And it started from a little small Facebook group to like a, with a handful of members mm -hmm. to suddenly mm -hmm. growing to 30,000 during COVID because yeah. people were online. Yes. They needed support. Mm -hmm. They were looking for like-minded people and they didn't have friends and family to go for that yeah. at that time. And... Um, and I think that's when the core of the community was born. And we realized that we are adding so much value to the women in our community that we can be a platform for empowering women. So mm -hmm. today we champion women socially mm -hmm. and we champion women in a business way that we support women entrepreneurs in the community. And that's when the true IWD was born. I mean, between um, your um, you know, official group and your following on social media, so 100,000, uh, 300,000 and more you know, uh, via Emirates Loves Philippines, that's a lot of people. Yes. We're not talking yes. about a few hundreds here. Yes. We're yes. talking about hundreds of thousands. Did you imagine that it was going to be like this? Was this intentional? Mm, no, actually. Never. <laughs> how, no. how did it snowball from just a few people talking together and yes. sharing the same um, you know, pains and uh, passion? How did it go from there? How did it snowball like that? I think we gave people a platform to come together and mm -hmm. reunite for a common cause. Okay. And we are all expats uh, away from home. We mm -hmm. leave our friends and family behind when you move countries, mm -hmm. right? And I think that is what unites our community together even today because okay. we give women that safe platform mm -hmm. to come together. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Common cause. Yeah. Yep. Super common important, cause. right? What about you, you Josie? You, you create a, a space for networking and then you share ideas, you share, and you know, this space would give you the opportunity to actually collaborate, a good potential to make business, to mm -hmm. do business with other people. Mm -hmm. And then, it, you know, you just don't know. You are already connected to another community, to another community. So it's just, it's a good place yeah. of really coming together. 
So we're saying here that it's a common cause. Everybody shares mm. the same thing, right? And then what you're saying here is that you're also giving them benefits in, in the way that they can network with each other and yes. gain something out of the group. Yes. Rima, do you want to, I, I think you have other things, um, you know, that you're doing, for example, benefits that you're providing to your members. What are these things? So we, yeah, we have a look, social mission of mm -hmm. connecting people, making friends, celebrating events, given yeah. that we're away from India. So we always meet up for Diwali, for example. Mm -hmm. Diwali is our biggest festival. Of course. Mm. Right? Uh, and we have a business mission of empowering women-led businesses. Because mm -hmm. what happens is when uh, when people move to, move to UAE from India, a lot of time they move because the men in the family got a job mm -hmm. in UAE. And the mm -hmm. women followed. Mm -hmm. And they were trailing spouses. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, they've left behind careers at home and flourishing careers back yes. in India. Mm -hmm. And they don't find those many opportunities here. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to build, and we have a proper network for it, it's called Indian Women Network now, mm -hmm. which is a business platform for women-led entrepreneurs. I love that. And these are the women starting their career for the second time. Most of them are moms. Most of them are juggling, you know, home and responsibilities and trying to set up a business. Mm -hmm. And I think those uh, real women supporting groups do not exist. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just trying to be one of that supportive, collaborative platform, which is safe for women to come together and discuss their issues and find solutions. Excellent. I, I mean, I'm trying to lift whatever might be interesting for other businesses to adopt because for sure, I mean, yours is all about community and you know having a tribe with you Josie on your yeah. social media a presence there but I'm sure a lot of businesses can learn from these examples yes. and what I'm hearing here is that there has to be tangible benefits yeah. you know it's not just a bunch of people hanging out together and you know talking about the same things there has to be benefits there now how do you keep that going because I can imagine maybe it's easy in the beginning right you deliver the benefit you have an event, 50,000 people come or 100,000 people come. What's next? What is the continuity like? How do you keep them engaged? You have to empower them. Mm -hmm. You know, because the events that I do, it's on an annual basis. So you cannot have them like say no now. You need them back again mm -hmm. the next time around, right? Mm -hmm. So you empower them. For me, what I do is... I do a lot of appreciation posts for them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's very important. We do it in different forms. We give awards, we give rewards, we give certificates. We also do, do this uh, appreciation, appreciation post via social media. That's very important. This ensures that the people that you work with will still be working with you the next time around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is not like a one time. It's a cycle. I love that. It's a cycle. I love that. Appreciation sometimes, it fuels the person yeah. to give more. They feel yeah. seen, right? They, yeah, and you know, the value, the respect is very, very important. You mm -hmm. let them feel valued yeah. and respected, you know? Let them have this confidence that mm -hmm. when they share ideas, that it will be heard. You mm -hmm. know, their perspectives will be respected. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. I, I love this insight because, you know, even from our experience running our publication before Illustrado Magazine, mm -hmm. where we were, uh, you know, empowering the Filipino community for 15 years, what I learned is that when you put goodwill out there and you give goodwill, you get it back, right? You empower the people, you give goodwill, you make them feel that they are seen, they're recognized, that comes back yeah, to you. It does. Right? It does. Rima, what about in your, in your experience? How think, was it keeping so, them engaged? So for us, it's about consistency, collaborations, and celebrations. Okay. You know, the three I love Cs. That. That, that's a good yeah. formula. The three Cs, I would say. Uh, consistency, because we go out every day and we tell the community what's coming, what's up, share the good news. Collaborations, we collaborate with a lot of small businesses from the community. We give, mm -hmm. we, we tell them what, we give them a safe space, we give them a marketing platform for women to come together. Mm -hmm. And celebrations, every year we organize a flagship event mm -hmm. where, where we celebrate the top 30 contributors to our uh, community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those 30 go away and become our brand ambassadors mm -hmm. and they are then talking about IWD. So it's not only Rima running IWD, mm -hmm. it's actually, you know, 30 into 4 into 5 people running mm -hmm. IWD. And we we add more and more people to our clan. So I it's love all that. about that. So you you have these flagship events, you keep them engaged, and you know there's something always exciting to you know uh, look out for. What happens during the lull moments between events? What's going on? How do you keep them talking about your group or talking about whatever you're doing, Josie? Your content. What happens in between? For me, in between, um, yeah, I have to 
make myself present all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, make be personal invitations or small gatherings. I make sure that they hear my voice mm-hmm. and they would feel my presence. That's very important. And we do have a lot of Facebook groups, you mm-hmm. know, WhatsApp groups, mm-hmm. where we share ideas, experiences, and uh, yeah, we can joke around. You know, let that fire still. Um, mm-hmm. uh, still be there, mm-hmm. you know, even without the big events that we do. Mm-hmm. So I think we've developed this, um, the beautiful gift of friendship. So mm-hmm. it's not just about, we, we don't have any name for the org. We don't belong to, the, to an organization. However, there's this tight stitch of friendship between I us. Know, yeah. yeah, when we look at each other, we know exactly what to do, yeah. you know, during events. So it is not as um, as hard as the first time that we did it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because there's some kind of an understanding already, the mutual respect that we have. I love that. So in between the, um, because we only have like two big events, yeah. that's June and December. So in between, we create small, small events. Mm-hmm engagement should be there you know the even if we don't see each other because we all have work to do everybody's busy but at least you know there are groups facebook groups whatsapp groups that we continue the yeah so it's really keeping up with those relationships right it's not the one and done it's 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 real people relationships right it's not just something that you click on and it's going to happen you have to sustain these relationships and they have to be authentic like you said Friendships. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. What about you, Rima? How do you keep it going? I think we, we are always running. I, yeah. don't, I don't think we have lull times. Even this I, summer. I'm getting tired <laughs> just listening to this. So oh, Even no, this no, summer no has times, been yeah. very busy for us. Yeah. Surprisingly, this summer has been very busy for us. Okay. But I think we use the down times to recharge and refuel and plan bigger events. So we come back bigger and better the next time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the community runs 24-7. For, right. Because for us, we are a close-knit community, right? So the Facebook group, my Insta, my WhatsApp group, my mm-hmm. WhatsApp is always buzzing. Mm-hmm. And the Instagram, you know, the, those run 24-7. They run every yeah. day. Whether we have an event or an organization or a gathering or not, mm-hmm. it's still there. It is going to be there. And I think you can't disappear because then people will be like, that's not authentic, right? So you need to be out there. Even if I'm taking a downtime, I went on a holiday for 10 Mm -hmm, days mm -hmm. uh, with my family and I just told everybody I'm going off for a holiday and this is personal time. But you still are out there telling people because Mm -hmm. you uh, are the face of the community. I see. Mm-hmm. And people trust Indian women in Dubai because they trust Rima. And I think it's just very yes, similar for you yes. because uh, the brands are more authentic when they can see the person behind mm-hmm. it. I'm just breathing heavily, just listening to all of this, <laughs> imagining the kind of work that needs to be done. But I do commend you two ladies. I mean, this is a lot of hard work and we'll, you know, delve more into that later on. But first, let me just say thank you again to Rove, our dear sponsors and supporters. Thank you, Rove. This is Challenger Brands. Please subscribe to our channel and share our content. Follow us on our agency's social media pages, illustrato.co, on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Or subscribe to our newsletter via our website, www.illustrato.co. Thank you to our sponsors for today's episode. Rove Hotels. Rove Hotels are a jumping off point for city explorers, simply designed for the young and young at heart. Born in Dubai, Rove is an award-winning lifestyle brand offering well-designed hotels, fuss-free service, and great value in well-connected locations. More than just a bed for the night, Rove provides rovers the missing link to connect you to the city like a local and explore the track less trodden in a relaxed environment where you can be yourself. With sustainability, local art, and high-performing functionality at the heart of its brand, Rove represents a new niche of hospitality for the digital nomad looking to become part of the neighborhood, even when they're just passing through. Please check them out at rovehotels.com. Welcome back to the show, guys. If you have not subscribed yet to our channel, please do so. Otherwise, I'm going to hound you, okay? (laughs) I'm going to hound you. So please subscribe and please do share this podcast with anybody who might benefit. You know, we do a lot of beneficial content that, you know, entrepreneurs and brand custodians can learn from. So please don't be shy. Share the show. So now going back to our guests, our ladies overcoming challenges i was saying earlier that it seems like there's so much that needs to be done just maintaining that community being uh you know there 24 7 rima you were saying that what kind of energy you know do you need to be able to pull that off and doesn't it ever become hard for you ladies 
you need a lot of energy a mm-hmm. lot of yes. energy because my at least my role is to deal with people all day mm-hmm. my whatsapp is full yeah. of messages i go to a mall i go to a meeting i meet people and that's what i do mm-hmm. uh, but i think that's also what energizes me to do more mm-hmm. and build that community even mm-hmm. more because mm-hmm. when you see the impact we are having when women come and tell me their stories of how iwd has supported them exactly. socially given them the confidence to come mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. when i see artists who had one once posted on my community and made like 20 orders that's, that's what encourages us right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we have stories of women who've grown with us in the last 3 years from mm-hmm. a one bedroom to a two bedroom to a three mm-hmm. bedroom and now hiring where, warehouses for their businesses that's amazing and those success stories is what motivates us to go back and amazing. do more to be um, part of that right yeah that i think we're making real impact much more real impact because exactly. we're very ground level driven because we are mm-hmm. driven by the members of the community and exactly. i think that that's what keeps me going so that keeps you going what about you josie how how do you do all this I don't know actually how to to answer <laughs> you. You're just doing it, yeah. <laughs> Because uh, just like Rima, you know, I'm uh, always surrounded by people. I talk mm-hmm. a lot to people, you know. I I go and see a lot of different communities, mm-hmm. not just the Filipino community. So, yes, when she mentioned earlier that you need to have a lot of energy, yes, that's mm-hmm. really true. Because without that energy, your meetings will not be that productive mm-hmm. because your mood will not be good, you yeah. know, and they could they will feel it. They will mm-hmm. see it, you know. Um uh, how do I do it? It's I think it's innate in me because mm-hmm. I think I was born 200% extrovert. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, I'm really a people person. Good for you. I think for you to be a community person, mm-hmm. you need to be like that, a people person. Mm-hmm. Else you'll get tired. You'll get tired. Of course. Else you'll be burdened, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's hard. It is not easy, but for me sometimes I do not know what's working and what's not because mm-hmm. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And you that's know? the best thing, right? Yes, yes, yes. What are the challenges? What are the setbacks? So if there's somebody out there, whether for their own uh, persona or for their brand that they want to build a community for or a following, what are the, you know, what are the challenges? Uh, I wouldn't call it challenges, but I think you need to be clear on people and purpose. Mm-hmm. right so who are the That's people good. you are going after mm-hmm. uh, what is your target customer persona mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. community member persona mm-hmm. and what's the purpose mm-hmm. and if there are tons of communities out there but what drives those people to come together and talk to each other every mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and if you clear on people and purpose uh your impact on the planet is very clear. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I think that's that's for me is what will drive that's a good community. That's the answer to everything. If you know exactly what you're there for yeah. then you can answer all the questions, right? Yeah. What about you Josie? Any drawbacks? Me, oh yeah. Any challenges? When I was appointed the chairman mm-hmm. for the community 2019 and because I was ambitious, I really would like to teach the Filipino community mm-hmm. of the seven emirates, mm-hmm. you know, because the sentiments would always be like it's always in Dubai. The yeah. big events are always in Dubai. How about us here? Mm-hmm. Like I cannot do the big events in Ras Al Khaimah, in Fujairah, in Umm Al Quwain, yes. but I can take a portion of the Filipino community from there mm-hmm. to attend our big events in here. Dubai. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, it involves strategic planning, open mm-hmm. communication, and um, um, inclusive involvement. Mm-hmm. When I say that, I travel. from one emirate to, to 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 the other to meet with the different leaders of the communities and uh, i support them mm-hmm. if i can in all their small activities mm-hmm. on their on their um communities mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. i make sure that i'm present whenever they invite me in it's um, it's tiring but i enjoy it mm-hmm. you know traveling mm-hmm. driving alone sometimes mm-hmm. just to meet with them it's not going to be special sometimes we just eat at the food court mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. just my presence they they, they should feel important. my presence yes yeah. and again it became a cycle it became mm-hmm. a cycle you cannot do it one time until i was able to gain their trust and they gave me that gift of friendship yeah. so now whenever i call them for the big events it's easier for me to do that i see okay you have such an extensive um, you know amount of people um, under your purview and with different people comes different values mm. different ideologies different th- ways of doing things i think maybe arguments or differences are unavoidable oh, and yeah. sometimes i think in the biggest communities politics occurs oh yeah what's the antidote to that how do you take care of things like that 
specifically politics. Reema is smiling. Reema, so give I us think some politics tips. and religion based discussions can never go in one direction, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think we as a community have a very strict rule of no mm -hmm. politics, no mm -hmm. religion mm -hmm. on my, my communities, yes. my groups at all. No discussion. We don't want to get there. Uh, the vision is very clear. Mm -hmm. We are for empowering women. We mm -hmm. are for women supporting women. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're a member of the community where mm -hmm. you want to come and support another woman whenever she's struggling in a social way or in a business way, mm -hmm. you're very welcome to be a part of the community. Mm -hmm. And I think whenever in doubt, we go back to rule number one and then say, ah, is this a discussion which is supporting women, supporting the Indian expand? And then if it doesn't, the answer is very clear. Thank you very much. Let's I close love the discussion. That. Lay down the law from the, from the get-go, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The rules have to be very clear especially as the communities get bigger uh, you obviously get different members different volunteers yes. different teams who are working on different things but if if the vision is united the rules are clear it's very easy to run it then definitely i, yeah. I like that i agree with you set the clarity. guidelines from the yeah. beginning yeah. Well, what about in your experience josie is the same clarity like why do we do this mm -hmm. in the first place is it mm -hmm. for you you for me or is it for the greater majority mm -hmm. now we mm -hmm. need to understand because setting the uh, roles of each one would be a great help for you to be able to come together, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, perfect, not really perfect the event, but at least, you know, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of, uh, of bumps here and there, but you can actually iron it out. Mm -hmm. Clarity, mm -hmm. clarity. You need to have fellow leaders with you who share the same vision. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to be in one page to start off because this will direct the path of everything that you will do. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. without that, without the clarity from the beginning, ah, it will be very difficult yes, to handle yeah. because there are a lot of exactly. egos there, exactly. a lot of pride, yeah. you know, Every, everybody wants to be leader, you know. And everything is open every, to interpretation, I guess. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So your mind will not be the same as the other, you know. So you have, and, and as a leader, you have to also have this um, space for feedback mm -hmm. because this is where you will improve on the next time around. Excellent. I love that. Building partnerships now. Let's talk about partnerships because I, I know that, you know, especially you, Rima, you've, you've built a lot of partnerships for IWD and, yes. you know, your events, Josie. You have a lot of these collaborations with different brands, right? So what is the foundation for building partnerships that bring value to your, uh, to your people? to your so, community how do you do that so i feel when you travel alone you can only go this much but when you travel together yes. with like-minded partners mm -hmm. brands mm -hmm. collaborations mm -hmm. similar organizations you go so much far and wide right Definitely. so i think our agenda from the very beginning from probably day one when i thought it's going to what it's going to be was always about collaboration mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we collaborate with the tons of brands mm -hmm. in the industry tons mm -hmm. of other organizations tons of these uh, wherever we see the the vision is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, wherever we see the mission is the same. Wherever see. we see people want to make real impact in whichever area they've chosen and then we come and support them through our community. So, and I think yes. all our partners are decided that w uh, do we have the same values? Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. we stand mm -hmm. for the same yeah. authentic real things? Yes. And if the answer is yes, IWD is very happy to collaborate then. Shared values. Shared so, values. Super important. Josie, in your it's, experience. It's the same thing actually. Collaboration is always the key mm -hmm. for success mm -hmm. especially for the big events that we yes. do it's always collaboration infinite communities is my partner in this and um, elena is the one taking good care of the partners mm -hmm. being a, um, a brand expert herself you know but what what we always discuss is the the partner should be happy it's always a win-win situation it's not just about okay i give you the the thing that you need mm -hmm. and then after that bye bye no, it shouldn't be that way. Yes. Yeah, they should feel that they are valued. You know, we talk to them. What is your KPI? Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. do you want to achieve from our event? Yes. You know, at the same time, open discussion, open communication is always I the like key that for, approach, for yes. yes. So we ask them, how many, what, how, and things like that. Yes. And then we come up with a solution. Okay, we do this. And then at the end of the day, they're happy. That's why they always come yeah. back. So it's not a us. commercial transaction. No. It's a, no. you know, you're helping them with their business also. They're yes. helping you out with whatever you're trying to do. We need to understand each other. Exactly. You know, what we need, you will give. What you need, we will also give. I love that. I love that it's all based on generosity and both yes. partners helping out each other, right? 
how do you think you're going to be able to sustain whatever you're doing right now? Are you thinking, um, you know, for the long term, do you have any plans in place? What are you thinking about, you know, in terms of making this a long term project for the two of you, whatever you're doing today? Uh, building a core team, building mm -hmm. a very solid team. And, uh, you know, when it started, it was me alone. Mm -hmm. uh, me just thinking, can a community can be built. There is a gap in the market. Women yeah. need to come together. Now we have enough people in, our, in the bandwagon who mm -hmm. believe in the same team, mm -hmm. but it's finding the right people who are the core team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, IWD runs even when Rima is on holiday. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's kind that's of the good. mission. That's I, I can be not be there for a month and mm -hmm. still, the, you know, the work, good work that we are doing still continues. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. getting that team in place is what, all it's kind of my focus right now do you see iwd running without reema mahajan in the future is there a future like that for you i think i iwd and reema are synonymous i don't know I, how I, we I will i felt like your heart skipped we, when yeah, i asked that exactly. question right? i think it's kind of my passion which comes from the yeah. heart so yeah. i right now uh, if you had asked me five years ago was will is social yeah. media my game no, yeah. but uh, if you ask me to take an IWD and me separate, I think I'd breathe, dream it 24-7. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know how. It's like my third baby exactly. after having my two kids. It's the th third thing which I've helped grow and nurture from a little seed to, exactly. a, to a tree that it is today. So I think that's what makes the difference between somebody who's just running a commercial enterprise to somebody who's really building community. You, yeah. It's hard to remove yourself from there because that's all heart for you, right? You're there. It runs in my heart. It's exactly. not. It's not you a brain imagine, only venture. Right? Exactly. I know the feeling. So, what about you, Josie? How are you th thinking about sustaining this, uh, whatever you have right now? Um, Rima earlier mentioned about forming a core team. For me, I think I already have that. You know, mm -hmm. that is the reason why on a yearly basis, I would just have to call each and every one of us, okay, Ram, let's come together again and let's do this for the community. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. every after event, it's very tiring. I would always say this is going to be the last one. Ta -ta 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 -ta. But at the same time, you know, the Philippine Independence Day celebration, it's, I think, Josie, Josie's name would always be there, mm -hmm. you know? So it's really hard for me to like go out, especially if I cannot see someone whom I can actually give and take good care of Are you of shedding this. a tear? Yes, this? a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot no, this imagine this. is very close with, yeah. to my heart. Even during um, COVID times, yeah. I made sure that you know, I did something for the community, even a small thing. Yeah. Even a small thing. I would always like go out of my way to find a venue mm -hmm. and things like resources to give something back to the community. Yeah. So I think it's just innate in me to always give back. I think we grew in the family also like yeah. that. You know, it was given to us. Yeah. It's a value that uh, not everyone has. Yeah. I think that's what keeps it going, really, right? Through thick and thin, because this is so important to you personally yes you're gonna make sure that things happen because yeah. you love doing this right yes. yes now my question is a little bit more personal um but how do you keep giving right there's a saying that if you keep from an uh, if you give from an empty cup you can't give anymore and I, I can imagine it must be so hard always being uh you know up uh, uh, for your um, you know up for your people being there on call meeting your communities giving all uh, all of your energy towards that how do you safeguard yourself how do you keep yourself going and are there any bad days at all we're just human beings yes yes Yes, if I would tell you that, oh, every day is, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, I would be lying, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, there are, there are a lot of bad days. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for me, and for me, I just, you know, sometimes you're not in the mood to be with people. Mm -hmm. It's not every day. Even if I am an extrovert person, mm -hmm. it's not every day that you want to be surrounded by people, right, Rima? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not every day that you want to talk to them. It's not every day, you know. You can't keep on smiling, you mm -hmm. know. For me, I can't keep on showing my dimples all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No. But, you know, how do I keep up with that one is, um, for me, it's not very hard. I just need to, like, for a few minutes, mm -hmm. condition myself, condition my mind again. Mm -hmm. And when I'm out there, I remember my goal. I remember my mission. Mm -hmm. And when you remember all of these things that you started mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. 
it brings back all the energy again mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you continue what you're doing. Yeah. That's really lovely. Yeah. Totally agree with her. I think there are good and bad days just like everything everybody does. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it's about taking a step back and recharging. Mm-hmm. I switch off on Sundays, for example, and mm-hmm. I, I, I don't say I do it 100%, but I minimize it, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. interactions. Or I've just come back from a 10-day holiday with my family in South mm-hmm. Africa and mm-hmm. I decided not to work or not to reply to messages. Good and everybody, for you. Everybody in the system knew that she's away on a holiday, and, you know, unless it's really urgent, Rima's not going to reply. Yeah, yeah. And I think huh. I, I have started putting those things into place now yes. that we are growing bigger day by day and some, some you know, some gatekeeping needs to be done in of personal course. and professional yeah. time. Uh, like something, one more rule that I'm trying to implement is after seven o'clock, I try and not work. Yes. And I go back home because I have two little kids. My kids are like five and nine. Yes. I need to see them for bedtime. And I'm trying to implement that rule more and more. It doesn't happen 100%. Nobody's perfect. But do that more and more. Mm-hmm. And I think just finding a good balance between your personal and your professional or passion for life mm-hmm. is what keeps us going. You have to set your boundaries. You have to you set know? your and, boundaries. And not everybody is the same person. Not everybody is an ultra extrovert <laughs> like, like She's Josie She's an ultra here. extrovert. I'm an ultra introvert. I am I'm the, the same. I'm totally Yeah, just like you. <laughs> exactly. I'm the biggest introvert I have known. And yeah. I think, uh, like I was saying, I would have never done social media if this was, this was not a passion yes. I was passionate about. Uh, so, yeah. I, but I think life happens and people and, you know, things are in store and it just uncovers one by one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Josie shall now be called the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> Every time I, I think about you, I'll go to her you. for energy because she loves talking to people. So that's really amazing. Exactly. But, yeah, but that's, that's what good else to you. is out there that you would hope for for your you know your your online following and your community. What else do you hope for? What's the hope for the future? I think for me, I just continue what I'm doing right now. I just continue, and uh, we'll see where it will lead me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just continue doing good. Mm-hmm. For me, um, uh, Dubai has been really good, giving opportunities and opening doors, a lot of doors. I think because I was um, connected with the government media office, I think I would, I would, I would like to be a part of um, another government mm-hmm. agency, mm-hmm. the local ones, you mm-hmm. know, because you know building relationship with uh, the local authorities or the local organizations, it facilitates smooth interactions with the larger UAE society, mm-hmm. you know, and also building connections with different expatriate communities yeah. because it opens opportunities for intercultural exchange. Of course. And broader, broader support. Mm-hmm. You know, Definitely. you'll never know when you need them, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, so build relationships with them. So that is what I'm just going to continue doing, build relationships, you know, with different expatriate community, with the local government and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. For me that- to be able to, to help more, mm-hmm. you know, be the bridge, yeah, exactly. mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. the bridge, be the voice, just connect people together. Mm-hmm. There are tons of things we can work together, yeah. right? For example, looking I think forward UAE, to an Indian and Filipino yeah, community. Uh, we'll do it one day, party, right? Whatever, why not? Yeah. I think together we represent one of the biggest expat exactly. populations in the UAE, Definitely. right? Yes. Why not? And I think for similar, very similar to her, uh, it's bigger and better for us. We are only hundred thousand ladies that we are touching today. I I feel there's so many more Indian ladies that we need to go after. So can we make more impact? Can we reach out to more women? Mm-hmm. Can more women feel connected to IWD? Uh, but the day when everybody knows about IWD is then we'll be say yes we've achieved yeah. our mission Rima whenever you're having like a sari night or something <laughs> please invite the two of us yes. because yes. I've never please do come. I've never had the chance to wear a sari before please do come I but would love to see I will see cover you. my tummy okay because I can't no problem. show that <laughs> no problem at all please do come for our Diwali you know Diwali is one of that, our biggest that events that would be lovely I'm, I'm inviting myself you are <laughs> super invited please be our special guest and but, I yeah. think uh, Deva, it, you know the festival is a spirit of coming together and celebrating yeah. together so we'd yeah. love to invite all of you for that before we close our conversation what can entrepreneurs learn from you what's like the golden rule if there was ever one in community building community building I think for me um, you have to leverage the the power of storytelling um Share authentic stories from someone in your community that would resonate to the greater majority and use that story 
to build emotional connection, to make your brand more impactful and relatable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because it should That's relate That's a great to lesson, definitely. Yeah. Relate, be relatable. Rima. Be relatable, be authentic, and have shared values with your community. If mm-hmm. you're clear on your values, you're clear on your mission, you will find like-minded people who will come and join you on your journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Your favorite word of wisdom, whatever it is pertaining to life, Pertaining to life, um, pertaining to life, it's a long-term commitment <laughs> that requires time, dedication, and empathy, and uh, continue support. Continue support. Continue support. Rima, your favorite words of wisdom? When women support each other, incredible things happen. happen yeah. Wow! Yeah. Amazing. Goosebump, guys. Okay, <laughs> I, I know that you know you uh, ladies are going to be doing so much great work out there. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for being a part of our podcast today. For the entrepreneurs out there, I just wanted to remind them of a couple of words that can help them build their communities. Number one is common cause. You've heard from Rima and from Josie. You have to find a common cause that you can bring people together for, right? Number two, networking and benefits. Make sure that the people that you're bringing in, you're providing them with benefits so that they have something tangible to take away from their involvement in your community. Number three is appreciation. Do not forget to appreciate your members put goodwill out there and good bill uh, goodwill will come back to you and the last word is friendship communities followership they're all based on authentic relationships so never never forget that friendships cannot be faked it has to be authentic it has to come from the heart and with that we're closing this show thank you so much Josie thank you Rima thank you and I think we need to go out and have a coffee somewhere to continue this conversation Definitely. right there's a lot to talk <laughs> a about. A lot to talk about, yes. <laughs> Shall we talk about stalkers next time? <laughs> <laughs> Super. And that was our podcast today, guys. Thank you for being with us on Challenger Brands. Thank you. Bye-bye. Please subscribe to our channel and share our content. For more actionable insights on brand and business building, follow us on our agency's social media pages, illustrato.co, or subscribe to our newsletter via our website, www.illustrato.co.